Hi, it's Neil here. Before we start today's show, I wanted to let you know that I've teamed up with my friends at Hirect this month. And Hirect is the first chat-based hiring app for startups. And what I love about Hirect is it takes everyone away from the dreaded email inbox and waiting around for responses. Think of it like WhatsApp for recruiting. And the Hirect app brings together recruiters and job seekers so they can directly connect with each other. And this allows recruiters and job seekers to communicate more and receive quick feedback. And the Hirect app also uses advanced technology to efficiently map job seekers and recruiters all based on their preferences and behaviour. So you can improve your chances of reaching Inbox Zero, accelerate your hiring process 10 times faster than those traditional ways, all by chatting and interviewing candidates anytime, anywhere, on any device. So I invite you all to download the Hirect app for free from the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. That's Hirect, spelt H-I-R-E-C-T. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. But on with today's show. Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, every day I try to explore the world of emerging and very complex technologies and try and learn more about them in a language that everyone can understand, not just a handful of people in the blockchain and crypto community. And I also try to share these stories from all over the world, not just Silicon Valley. And today I want to take your ears to Munich in Germany, not for Oktoberfest, because I'm afraid it's cancelled, but maybe next year. (laughs) But seriously, I wanted to learn more about how EtherRisk is on a mission to make insurance fair, accessible, all through an open source decentralized insurance protocol to collectively build insurance products on the Ethereum blockchain. And since its launch in 2016, the EtherRisk protocol has been reimagining insurance solutions to democratize the process in the interest of the consumer. Quite a unique angle, this one, but enough spoilers and scene setting for me. Buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Munich in Germany so we can speak with Christoph Musselbrock, co-founder at EtherRisk. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yes, uh, my name is Christoph Musselbrock. I'm one of the founders of EtherRisk. And uh, EtherRisk is a decentralized insurance protocol, which should help people to build their own insurance product. And uh, by this, we want to make insurance uh, fair and more decentralized and uh, also more accessible for people who have currently no access to insurance. For example, uh, I think uh, still uh, two thirds of the uh, world population has no access to insurance at all. And we want to change that uh, somehow. And um, yeah, something about my, my myself. Uh, I'm a banking professional from training and uh, most of my career has been in the German cooperative banking sector. So uh, cooperative banks are a special feature of Germany, I think, and Austria and some also in Switzerland. Uh, these are small banks uh, and these banks are owned by the customer. So uh, the, the German cooperative banks have about 18 million members. And uh, so it's actually a pretty decentralized structure. And uh, there are one thousands of them. And that is where I spent most of my uh, pro- professional life until I decided to run EtherRisk, which is also, again, a decentralized structure or we, we, we want to become one. And so uh, I see many parallels between the cooperative sector and uh, the blockchain, uh, the DeFi world. So uh, that's what motivated me after some time to to start my own business uh, and uh, start with blockchain. And uh, that has also some personal background because uh, I studied mathematics and uh, also formal mathematics. And uh, so... Uh, blockchain, which is also heavily uh, mathematical uh, theory, 
uh, immediately attracted me when I learned about Ethereum and uh, not so much Bitcoin, uh, but Ethereum is a different world with, which is much more driven by people from academia and not so much people from, uh, yeah, which, uh, you know, these Bitcoin maximalists, which are some sometimes a bit uh, very um, difficult to talk to. And <laughs> it's more like a religion sometimes, I think. And Ethereum is more rational. Yeah, so I like this rational aspect of uh, Ethereum. And uh, yeah, so we started five years ago building uh, something new. And at that time, there, we, we, there was no insurance project on Ethereum at all. So it was, we were really one of the first uh, the pioneers and uh, it was a green field and uh, nothing happened there. And uh, as I thought, well, insurance will become important in any financial ecosystem. So if we are the first, then that's a good position. Yeah, So let's start. And uh, so we, uh, we built our first product and uh, very soon we decided to move to a platform approach. And yeah, that's where the early days of EtherRisk in 2016. And uh, since then, a lot of stuff has happened. And uh, yeah, we can talk about that in more detail now. Excellent. And there's so much to unpack there. I'm thinking of you starting out in the banking industry, and I'm left kind of curious of, of what it was that made those worlds of insurance, technology, blockchain, make all them collide. Can you remember where that passion came from and what put you on this path you're on right now? Yes, of course. Uh, as I said, uh, I studied mathematics, so I was always uh, deep in IT, so also in my banking Career. I uh, the, the last 15 years I spent in a huge uh, software house, which was also owned by these cooperatives, and uh, we built the, the the core banking solution for them. And so I was always heavily involved with software and uh, stuff like this, and also risk management. Yeah, so I was responsible for building the risk management software for these banks and. Uh, uh, that's also where I have some idea of risk management, but insurance, uh, you are right, that was completely new for me. Yeah. So, uh, but I thought, uh, well, there are some similarities between banking and insurance. Um, insurance is highly regulated, banking as well. Uh, I know regulators, I know how they think, uh, and uh, insurance has something to do with risk. So that's also quite common for me. So it was natural in a, in a certain sense, yeah. And uh, but for me, the most the, the push was uh, to to realize that there is something which has the same impact as the invention of internet. Yeah. And uh, when I when I was young, uh, I was one of the first who had a computer and uh, was uh, doing internet. And uh, at that time, I. Uh, somehow missed to uh, run my own business. But uh, this time I said, <laughs> I, I want to be a part of the party. <laughs> so <laughs> let's do something on my own. And uh, yes, that was a good decision, I think. And I think blockchain will have the same impact, if not more than uh, the uh, invention of internet, uh, because it's dealing with values and not only with information. And uh, so I think there is a huge uh, opportunity. And you see also, uh, whole countries are going to uh, use blockchain technology or to use cryptocurrencies. And uh, of course, the traditional, uh, the, the big Western countries, uh, they are still very reluctant. And uh, also US government has a bit, uh, yeah, uh, they are, they, they have not made a decision yet. Yeah. So some are big fans, some are completely averse. And uh, so there will be probably a lot of uh, discussion and also um, uh, fight and conflicts. But uh, in the long run, I think uh, blockchain will for sure replace the current financial industry completely. Yeah, it's an incredibly exciting space right now. And of course, that path did lead you to EtherRisk. So can you set the scene and, and tell me a little bit more about how you're trying to reimagine the insurance solution and that wide range of solutions out there and attempting to democratise the process, yes, uh, exactly. democratise the process in the interest of the consumer? Because it's something that I've not seen done before. But can you just set the scene there? Yeah, so actually the idea of what we had, we wanted not to... Uh, jump onto a specific part of the value chain and improve some opti locally optimize some stuff that was not our idea but we, we thought if we have now this uh, new technology which enables us not only to program stuff but 
actually to program money, uh, then we should do a good job and reinvent the whole value chain completely from, from scratch. So that was the approach uh, to do something completely new and uh, to build a full insurance in a single smart contract or in a single software model. Yeah? So that was the, the, the early days. And uh, the idea was to make the whole process completely transparent, accessible, without any, any intermediaries, uh, all that's without any paperwork. Uh, so everything should go uh, automated and online and uh, people can transfer their, their premiums directly via a, a virtual wallet and uh, receive their payouts also directly in cryptocurrency. So to remove everything what stops insurance to be to be efficient in the traditional way yeah so the traditional insurance is a space where which is full of intransparencies full of inefficiencies and uh, actually insurance sucks yeah so nobody wants to buy an insurance yeah it's you need it yeah you are you are forced to buy it but actually it's not a pleasure yeah and so we wanted to change this and uh, especially this aspect that actually if you if you sign an insurance contract uh, then you typically do not know what happens yeah if you have a claim will the claim ever be satisfied or will you need to fight with your insurance company it's a tedious process it takes a long time you wait months for your money even in in, in very clear cases and uh, so we wanted to improve all of that yeah by reinventing the whole the whole thing and that was also was a, was a very appealing on this approach that we could start something which was just completely new and uh, also independent on any other uh, existing players and uh, yeah that was the motivation and then we thought we need to make it a platform because uh, if we have one product then we are still centralized yeah then uh, we are still the uh, the uh, the people who run it, but uh, we wanted to to scale it, and uh, that means that many people need to be able to build such products. Yeah? Not only we, we ourselves, but we we need to provide the tools and the environment that people can build their own products, and that is what we are doing right now. And Ether Six goal is to make insurance fair and accessible through your open source decentralized insurance protocol to collectively build insurance products on the Ethereum blockchain. But for people listening both in and outside of the community, can you just walk me through how it all works just to bring yeah. everything we're talking about to life here? Yeah, exactly. So the what we have built is actually something like an operating system on blockchain, which runs on blockchain. In the same way like you have your iPhone and there is your Apple iOS and on, on this iOS, then you can install apps and these apps run on this iOS, on this operating system and the operating system provides all kinds of uh, generic services, for example, a fingerprint sensor or a camera, whatever, and every application can use it. And in the same way, we build a platform which provides generic services which any insurance product will need. For example, payment or uh, we need, we, we, the connection to oracles which provide data or uh, risk pools uh, to cover the losses and all these generic structures which you need for an insurance product and which is a lot of work to build uh, one time, but uh, as soon as you have it, you can reuse it anytime. So that makes a lot of sense to have one platform which provides all the generic stuff and then people can come and build only their specific product uh, related stuff in a, in a very small uh, smart contract, which can then use all the stuff from the generic platform. And uh, so uh, it's actually like Linux for insurance. Yeah, that's the other way around. And uh, so, uh, and that's also the reason why it needs to be free and open. Yeah, so anybody can use it. it should attract as many people as possible because it's easy to use, and uh, you don't need to pay fees or anything to use it. Yeah. And what projects are currently hosted on that open source generic insurance framework? Is there anything you can share about the kind of projects that are on there? Exactly. The yeah. So we have one large project, uh, which is also a whole sector. Uh, that's the sector of microinsurance for developing countries. And uh, the largest project, but what we are currently running is in Kenya, uh, crop insurance or weather insurance for smallholder farmers. And that is a group of uh, people who typically have no access to insurance, 
But together with our partner, we, we have built this product, which is so cheap in, in the processing that people can actually afford it to, to buy it. And uh, we have 17,000 farmers onboarded now, and uh, these receive payouts in a much shorter time than they used to in the past because we removed all these manual steps of filling Excel sheets and dealing with numbers. And in our new platform, everything is automated. And uh, this gives also a lot of trust because people can actually check if we calculate it correctly uh, and if we uh, ca calculated the payouts in the right way, which is also not possible. Yeah? So in the, in the past, people need to believe that uh, the payouts that, which they received, that they have been calculated correctly and now they can check it. And that creates trust. And trust is enormously important for, especially for the developing countries because people typically uh, have uh, issues with uh, corruption. And so they, they, they often believe that big companies uh, try to, um, uh, to fraud them. Or, and, and so by, by building a platform which is so transparent, then that creates trust and that creates adoption and uh, scale. And that's what we are doing. So this is one sector. Uh, and that is also a typical example. And uh, currently we are working to uh, to make this something like a blueprint, which can then be copied to any country and any other uh, situation. So we are starting in Kenya, but the same product could be deployed also in Latin America or in Asia, anywhere where you have smallholder farmers, which have similar uh, needs to, for uh, crop insurance. And the other uh, products which we have are also um, uh, sometimes weather related, for example, hurricane insurance, which is uh, very important for the Caribbean uh, islands and uh, which are suffering from hurricane damages uh, in many uh, times. Um, and that's the same idea. So you have wind data, uh, the wind speed, and uh, from history, you know that uh, if a certain region suffers uh, wind speed, for example, above 140 miles per hour, then in any case, we have damage. You don't need to make photos even. Yeah? So if you know that there has such a, a wind speed, then actually most uh, most small uh, uh, houses are damaged and so you can directly pay out. And that's very important for people living there that they get immediate payouts uh, and that, that they do not need to file a claim with a lot of paperwork and so on. So that's also a second project which is currently worked upon. Uh, same idea, weather data, and then uh, you pay out. Uh, the third product is uh, our first, uh, actually, the flight delay, also data-based and data-driven, um, and uh, you can ensure against the risk of a flight being delayed. And if the plane lands with a delay, then you get an immediate payout and you can cover your additional travel expenses like hotel and uh, whatever you need. So that's also something very uh, typical for our platform. Uh, and then we are currently exploring also uh, other uh, areas uh, which are um, interesting, for example, um, solar plants. Yeah? So solar plants are depending on solar um, uh, sunshine. And so if uh, the sun doesn't shine, then you will have losses because of uh, you uh, will not produce that much um, power as you uh, plant. And we can ensure against this. Again, the same idea. You measure the sunshine uh, via public available data, satellites, whatever. And then you can uh, calculate the loss based on the sunshine uh, time. And uh, if the sun is not shining enough, then you can pay out. And uh, so you help people who run these solar plants and uh, to have a more constant uh, income. So these are typical examples of what we are currently doing and exploring, and uh, hopefully we will see more of that uh, with independent teams. And it seems to offer so many great benefits for consumers, but I'm curious, how has the, in the insurance industry received this? Is it welcoming change like this? What, what kind of feedback have you heard? Yes, actually, they are welcoming it, but uh, they don't want to do the first step. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they are very generous and they, they leave the field for us. <laughs> so they, they say they were, the, the traditional insurance industry is maybe the 
slowest industry uh, worldwide, yeah, because they are dealing with risk and of course they need to be very secure and so uh, innovation is uh, not very common in the industry and especially if it's uh, groundbreaking like what we do, uh, working with cryptocurrencies, working with blockchain, so that is something what traditional insurers are not yet doing, uh, at least not on a large scale. They're doing some proof of concepts and maybe you have heard about this uh, B3I initiative, which is a, a consortium of large insurance companies which are doing a blockchain pilot, but all only behind closed doors. So nobody knows exactly what they are doing and it's not open source and they are trying, but uh, they are not doing it in an open space. And so um, we, we are talking a lot with traditional insurers and they are very interested and, um, but no real activity here. Yeah? So they are very reluctant and probably they wait until we have some success. And as soon as we are successful, then they will follow. Uh, so that's what I expect, but probably not in the next year, not even in the next three years, but maybe in four or five years. And at the moment, you are very fortunate. You've got much of this ground to yourself. But I'm curious, what are the, the biggest challenges with increasing adoption for you guys right now? And, and how are you helping overcome that? Yeah, the, the biggest uh, challenge is that crypto is still a closed, very closed community. Yeah? So there are, it's a large community, yeah? but maybe I would say some millions of yeah. people who have actually own cryptocurrencies, uh, but uh, compare uh, some million to a worldwide population of 7 billion. Yeah? So it's still a tiny fraction of the population, uh, even in the developed countries. And uh, if I look at my friends, yeah, so they are now everybody has heard about Bitcoin. Yeah, so uh, but that's all. Yeah, and uh, nobody owns cryptocurrencies, and uh, so uh, that's one big obstacle. Yeah, that um, blockchain and cryptocurrencies have still, in many areas, they have a bad reputation. Yeah, for example, many people connect Bitcoin with drugs and uh, weapons and. Uh, and bad uh, businesses and uh, dark uh, Silk Road and things like this. Uh, so that is uh, probably stopping many people to actually do something with it. And the other thing is that uh, still the whole blockchain uh, space is lacking real world applications. And uh, so, uh, for example, you cannot pay with Bitcoin. Yeah? yeah, Many tried it and there are some uh, niche where you can already pay with Bitcoin. Uh, Tesla was a big example. Yeah, for a short period of time, you could buy your Tesla with, a, with Bitcoin, uh, but still, it's not widely adopted. Yeah, so it's still a very closed area. And so we try to to build uh, bridges in the real world by, for example, providing fiat gateways. Yeah, so uh, you can pay just with your credit card for your insurance and you don't need to buy Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency. So actually we are, we, we are sometimes hiding the blockchain part from people and just saying we are transparent, we are fair and you can uh, maybe you can also have some governance uh, rights with, uh, if you buy a policy with us. But uh, actually, dealing with cryptocurrency is still uncommon for most people, and that stops adoption. Yeah, and uh, in Africa, we are also doing it uh, this way. So, if the farmer will never need to learn anything about blockchain, he just gets an application where he can check his uh, policy, he can check the weather data, he can check if he uh, gets the payout, but no word about blockchain. Yeah, he would not understand. He would not even have heard about it. Yeah, so. Actually, we try to hide it a bit from the customer, at least from the end customer. And uh, then uh, in, in Africa, we have this large user base, and uh, but not because they are uh, looking into crypto, but because they are looking into a fair and cheap insurance uh, product. 
Yeah, I completely agree with you there. And I think for the most part, the the average Joe or Joanna out there do not care about blockchain and crypto. Exactly. Guys like me and you love researching about it, reading about it, learning about it. But yeah, for, exactly. to get that mainstream adoption, it really does need to be almost invisible to people. Yeah, it? in the same way, like nobody cares about TCP IP. Yeah. yeah? So it's the base of our whole world, but nobody cares about it. Yeah. yeah. And in the same way, uh, blockchain will be will vanish from the uh, typical consumers uh, viewpoint and uh, it's something for technicians yeah? and uh, they know about it uh, and they are the only one who need to know about it yeah? and uh, but the mainstream adoption will come if maybe for example if uh, big companies start using it or uh, or countries move to bitcoin uh, or ethereum and uh, use cryptocurrencies uh, or the financial industry will start using it yeah but a long, a long road to go. So yeah, I think it, I think it can be frustrating for techies because the average home now has more tech in it than their, an office did ten Absolutely. years ago. You know, we've Absolutely. got digital assistants, smart TVs, yeah. smart cookers. Yeah. Uh, computers, yeah, laptops. Actually, but that's uh, a good but, news, actually. Yeah, because, yeah but, but nobody, uh, nobody cares how it works, do they? <laughs> yeah, of course. But actually, it's a good news because imagine uh, 20 years ago, nobody had a computer, no, no, no smartphone, nothing. Yeah? Now everybody has it. So everybody in five minutes can buy Bitcoin if he likes. Yeah? So the, 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 the step from nothing to full involvement is very small yeah so actually if adoption starts then it co can come really quickly yeah and uh, it's completely different from the adoption of internet which took years until people had an internet connection and uh, device and whatever but uh, if blockchain starts adoption then it will go really like an avalanche yeah? so it will just uh, uh, be a matter of few months and then everybody will use it Absolutely. And before you came on the podcast today, I was doing a little bit of research on you guys, and I learned yeah. that e Etherisk also has a social impact arm. So can you tell me a little bit more okay. about that? And also share with the listeners how I think you collaborated with Acre Africa and successfully exactly. onboarded more yeah. than 17,000 smallholder farmers in Kenya. So can you share that and, and the impacts of that uh, social impact arm you've got there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was a lucky coincidence that uh, two years ago I met uh, uh, a guy which was heavily involved in the impact insurance uh, space and he was desperately looking for a technical solution to bring insurance to smallholder farmers at low cost. And uh, so I met Michiel Berlende and uh, Michiel uh soon afterwards he became part of our team and uh so he uh built up this whole space of inclusive insurance first in sri lanka where we had already a project uh, with paddy farmers and then in kenya uh with uh, the current project and uh then we uh, we were thinking about how we organize this yeah? because uh, etherisk is actually a tech project and uh, so we are uh, mainly focused on building the platform and basic infrastructure. And so we decided to start uh, an own business, uh, which is run by Michiel, uh, which is focusing on the impact insurance space. And that is Etheris Impact BV in the Netherlands, which is run by Michiel Berende and uh, one other partner, Jan Stockhausen, who is a lawyer, who's always also joined uh, our project. And uh, they are, um, exploring this whole space not only kenya but also zambia and latin america uh, and so they run independently on our main project and the main project is focusing on building the platform and the generic stuff and uh, of course we work very closely together and it has been an incredibly uh, busy year for you guys. But what's next for Etherisk? I appreciate you probably can't share too much. And we will have members of your community wanting to get those little teasers. So is there Absolutely. anything you can leave with us about the road ahead? Yes, uh, of course. The, uh, the main next big step is that we uh, will uh, build uh, risk pools and uh, introduce staking, which is a very fundamental mechanism in the whole DeFi space. And we also we will utilize this to collect capital, which will then back up our insurance products. And staking just means that people who own our DIP token, they can lock their DIP token for a certain period, and then they participate in the actual risk transfer process. So they taking risk, but they also receive rewards and uh, they can earn money on it. Yeah? And 
ideally, uh, and if the product is calculated in the right way, then they will actually earn uh, pretty much money with uh, providing their capital. And uh, but of course they are also taking a certain risk. Yeah. So for example, if there would be a lot of losses uh, for a specific product, then these losses would paid from this risk pool, and uh, so they they would also have a small uh, like uh, likelihood that they lose some money because in a catastrophic event, uh, a so-called black swan event, then the investor would also be uh, liable for covering the losses, and then that would be. Uh, also, the, the moment when they would maybe lose some money. But in general, uh, the, of course, as any insurance, we are calculating the products in a way that you will have a decent profit um, in the end. Yeah. And uh, so that is the next step, uh, building these risk pools. And uh, the, the other step is that we want to provide teams which build on our platform with the best experience uh, from the developer perspective. So we provide them with a rapid development environment, which we have built. Uh, we provide them with grants uh, to start up their business. Uh, we have a large grant program, which is still looking for interested teams. And uh, so hopefully we will attract many developers to start their own products. And uh, so we want to incentivize this process and uh, uh, hope that we will also create the network effects which uh, come from this. And so uh, these are the, the next big steps, uh, staking and uh, building up a, a good de developer uh, community. And uh, I think that's the uh, focus for the next year. Fantastic. Well, I wish you the best to look for the next year and the, the, the road ahead. But before I let you go, we've come full circle now. We began today's episode talking about your origin story and how you got involved in this yes. industry. But now I'm going to ask you what has been the soundtrack to your career in technology? Is there a particular <laughs> song or piece of music that has accompanied you so we can uh, add your song and story to our Spotify playlist? Is there anything that springs to mind? Yes, of course. Uh uh, let me think. Uh, it's not yet not so much related to the Isaris story, but uh, it was a song which uh, affected me a lot in the last uh, month. Uh, I, somehow I got uh, on this TV series uh, 12 Monkeys, yeah, which is actually based on another uh, film which was from Terry Gilliam, 12 Monkeys with uh, Bruce Willis. And that has also a predecessor from uh, uh, Chris Marker, who made this famous, um, how it is called, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, but uh, so that, that is a, a very nice TV series uh, with some same famous actors, and they have a super soundtrack. And one uh, sound was uh, actually got me, and that is an uh, old song from a uh, jazz pianist, uh, Nina Simon, uh, Lilac Wine. And uh, so uh, just uh, look it up in, in um, uh, Spotify or wherever you, you have it. Uh, Nina Simon, Lilac, Lilac Wine. There are also some nice cover versions, for example, from, um, uh, how, how is she called? Um, Ah, there's Jeff Buckley, isn't there? Uh, no, uh, the uh, young, young uh, uh, wrecking ball. Who is the, the singer of wrecking oh, ball? Oh, uh, Miley Cyrus. Yeah, Miley Cyrus made a nice cover of like Lilac Wine as well. Yeah, in the garden. Oh, pretty okay. nice. Well, I'll add that to the playlist. You can't beat a bit of Nina Simone. Very classy. You cannot go wrong at all. I'm also going to check out the TV series. I've seen the movie many yeah. years ago, but I didn't realise there was a TV show. So I'll yeah. check that out. And for anyone listening that wants to find out more information about Etherisk, contact your team, join your community. What's yeah. the best starting point? Well, the best uh, starting point is, of course, our website, etherisk.com. Uh, there are all these social links to our Telegram channel. We have a forum. Uh, we have uh, a blog, which is very uh, frequently updated, where we publish all major results. And so the blog is really uh, worth reading. Um, but if you want to take uh, come in contact, then just join our Telegram groups. Uh, we are uh, around uh, 24 hours, <laughs> nearly. Uh, so if you have any questions, just uh, put it in the Telegram channel and we will try to, to uh, help you out the best we can. 
And do you have a separate Telegram channel for the When When Moon Boys? Are they? <laughs> yeah, there is also uh, an unofficial trading channel. Of course, uh, it's not run by us, uh, but by f- some friends of us. And uh, so, if you have any uh, issues with price or When Moon, then please go to our in- on- in- unofficial trading channel. Love it. And I yeah. loved hearing about the Etheris protocol and how you guys have been reimagining insurance solutions to yeah. democratize the process in the interest of the consumer. Incredibly cool. But more than that, I've just loved hearing your story and how you got where you are today mm-hmm. and where you're going. So thanks for sharing that with me today. Yeah, thank you also. Great to have you. So Etherisk and its open source common infrastructure, the generic insurance framework, GIF, includes shared smart contracts, product templates, microservices, and the native cryptographic token, which is DIP, for anyone wanting to look that up on CoinMarketCap. And all this is to enable the seamless and efficient creation of decentralized insurance products, but with increased transparency and fairness for all parties. And as I said at the very beginning, since its launch in 2016, it has been reimagining insurance solutions to democratise the process in the interest of the consumer. And projects included on EtherRisk open source generic insurance framework currently include flight delay insurance, crop insurance, social insurance, and hurricane protection. So that's what we've learned today. And I cannot thank Christoph enough for coming on and sharing his story and the road ahead for the company. But over to you, I'd love to hear your insights, opinions, questions, whatever it may be. If you want to come on the podcast and talk about anything we've uh, discussed today, I'm happy to do that too. So email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, LinkedIn and Twitter at Neil C. Hughes. And my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. But I'm afraid we're out of time today. I will meet you all in your podcast feed bright and early tomorrow. We'll have a completely different topic about how technology is transforming our life, work, industry, or even world. But more than anything, just a thank, a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.